In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat, at welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. My dear friends, the Gospel presents Jesus as one who is determined to journey to Jerusalem, the city of his destiny. There he will undergo his exodus, his liberation of the people by his passion, death, and resurrection. Not even the close-mindedness and rejection of the Samaritans can stop him. The Lord expects the same kind of decisiveness from his followers. Proclaiming the kingdom of God is so important that everything else should be secondary to it. My dear friends, at the beginning of this Mass, we once again call to mind our shortcomings, our sinfulness, and we ask the Lord for pardon and strength. All together, I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned sin in my thoughts and in my, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my, through my fault, through my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. And, and therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant that we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When the Lord chooses Elisha as prophet to succeed Elijah, Elisha says goodbye to his parents and to his occupation and follows Elijah as his attendant. Our reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Meholah, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat. As he was blowing with twelve yoke of oxen, he was following the twelfth. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him and, Take the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah. As his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
explains the true meaning of Christian freedom. Governed by the laws of the Spirit, this freedom operates in love and service. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, Beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by thy spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the spirit, 
and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace all stand. Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord when the days of jesus being taken up were fulfilled he resolutely determined to journey to jerusalem and he sent messengers ahead of him on the way they entered the samaritan village to prepare for his reception there but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven and to consume them? And Jesus turned and rebuked them and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes of dens and birds of the sky have met nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. My dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Sino po ba dito sa inyo ang merong demanding na asawa? Papataas ko sana yung kamay, kaso baka mag-away pag-uwi. Huwag eh. na. Sino dito ang may demanding na boyfriend o girlfriend o kaibigan? Sino dito ang merong slave driver o uh, demanding ng mga supervisor o manager o superior baka may magtaas ng kamay dito at sabihin, ako father meron <laughs> kayo po uh, I asked that question at the beginning of our sharing this morning because if you uh, heard intently, if you listened well doon sa gospel na binasa natin, particularly yung last part ng ating ibanghelyo, pagkatapos nating maunawaan, mapakinggan at maunawaan yung ibanghelyong pinakinggan natin, ito ang sasabihin natin. Lord, demanding ka ha? Demanding lang. And I think... Meron namang karapatan, kung sasagot siya sa atin, wala ba akong karapatang mag-demand? Every time that He would demand something for, uh, from us, we are being directed to the cross. Pagkatapos ng lahat, wala akong karapatang mag-demand. Pagkatapos ng lahat ng ibinigay ko sa inyo, wala ba akong karapatang mag-demand? He has all the right to demand from us because of what he did 
for all of us. Lahat ng pinagdaanan niya, the suffering, the pain, the sacrifices, and everything that he has given us. And because of that, Lord, meron kang karapatang mag-demand. But the demand of the Lord is unlike our many demands, the human demands. Minsan, unreasonable yung mga demand natin sa bawat isa. Meron mga klingi, huwag kang aalis sa tabi ko. Ano yan, aso? No? Minsan naman yung demand, bigay mo sa akin yung ganitong sweldo. Ano yan? Nakapanalo sa loto. Sometimes our demands are unreasonable. Ang tanong ko sa inyo, ano, bakit kayo andi dito ngayon sa loob ng simbahan? May hinihingi, ano? O may dinidiman? Ah, magkaiba yun, ano? Ah, hinihingi o dinidiman? Lord, tagal ko nang hinihingi sa iyo to. Nagiging demand na. Pag hindi mo yan binigay sa akin, magpapalit na ako ng relihiyon. Pag hindi mo yan binigay sa akin, hindi na ako tutulong sa simbahan. O, di ba? Demanding lang. No? What right do we have? But with the Lord, He has all the right to demand something from us. But even when He demands, it's not something that is unreasonable at walang purpose. His demand, demand from us is always reasonable. Bakit ka mo? Sapagkat yung demand niya to put Him first above all things, to put Him to make Him as our priority, in spite of the many things that we are going through, is reasonable. Bakit? Sapagat alam niya at kilala niya tayo na sa dinami-dami ng mga preoccupation natin sa buhay, oftentimes, we put Him sa back burner or we put Him on the side. He becomes our second, third, fourth, fifth, priority. But the demand of the Lord is to be put always as our priority, our number one. And that is not for selfish reason. It is in fact for our own good. Because when we made make Him as our priority, then everything else na pinagdadaanan natin, na mga pangangailangan natin, mga sacrifices natin, buhat-buhat natin, the challenges that we are encountering ay nalalagay, na ilalagay sa perspektibo ng ating Panginoon. Sa paanong paraan? ba diba sabi nga niya, o oh, sige, pagka ako yung ginawa mong priority, your burden will be light. Pagka ako yung ginawa mong priority, yung mga pinapasan-pasan mo yan, nasabi mo, bakit mo naman pinapasan ito? ay nagkakaroon ng dahilan kung bakit mo siya pinapasan. And it gives us the strength. In other words, it puts everything not only from a human perspective, but the, from, from the perspective of God. Sa pananaw ng ating Panginoon. Demanding yes, but unreasonable no. For our own good. My dear friends, I know why you are here sa minor basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawa because you have something that you are seeking. Meron kayong mga hinihiling at dinudulog sa ating mahal na ina. But when you look at the Blessed Mother, she is telling us, look at intently at the image because she is telling us that even her, ang priority niya ay ang ating Panginoon. Every time that we look at her image, she is directing us to the child in her arms. Not me, but the child. Because this is the priority. And everything else are seen from that context. Sa mata ng Diyos at sa grasya ng Diyos. Make no mistake about it, our God is a demanding God. He asks us to put Him as our number one and the only one and the priority. But that is not 
for selfish reason. It is something for our own good. Because when we put Him as our priority, then everything else becomes bearable. Everything else becomes meaningful. Every pain that we're going through becomes something that we can endure. Ang Diyos ba natin ay demanding? Totoo po. We have a demanding God, but it is for our own good. Kindly all stand. All together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God, God from, from God, God, light from, from light, God, true God from true God, God begotten, begotten not made, made unsubstantial with the Father. Father. Through Him all things were made, for us, for us men and, and for our salvation. salvation. He, he came, came down, down from heaven, and, and by the Holy Spirit, Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, Mary and, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. God our Father, you empowered your Son to follow your will even to the death, death on a cross. Through the Spirit, may we remain obedient in love as we say, Faithful God, help us remain faithful in you. Faithful God, help us remain faithful to you. Deliver your church from the curse of clericalism and the poison of ideology, that we may remain true only to the gospel. We pray. Faithful God, help us remain faithful to you. Help us, help all public servants discerning better as they make policies that would benefit all and not just a few. We pray. Faithful God, help us remain faithful to you. Touch our hearts, all of us who are gathered here today, that we may be moved to be loving towards each other, especially to the least of our brothers and sisters. We pray. Faithful God, help us remain faithful to you. May young people called to priestly and consecrated life have the resolve of the prophets and of Jesus to persevere in their calling. We pray. Faithful God, help us remain faithful to you. Embrace our departed brethren into your eternal love. Console the mourning families and friends they have left behind. We pray. We also pray in a very special way for all the devotees of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, for their well-being, for their welfare, for their health and safety. We pray to the Lord. Faithful God, help us remain faithful to you. Now we pause for a while and in silence you may now offer your personal intentions. Faithful Father, in your spirit, turn our unfaithful hearts towards trust and confidence in your eternal will through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
Let's all stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of the sacred gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We we'll lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deeds by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. for this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Socrates, our Archbishop, Fidelis, our Auxiliary Bishop, Gerard, the Master of the Order of Preachers, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles and all the Saints, we have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. all stand. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I live you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you.
Please kneel. My dear friends, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Now blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say, say the, the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. By the blood of Christ, bring me to our last name. Please, please kneel for the prayer for the families. Kindly join us in praying for the family. So kindly all kneel as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we, we, come, we before come before you, you to, praise to praise you and, and to, to thank, thank you for the great gift, gift of the family. family. We, we pray, pray to you for all families consecrated, consecrated by the sacrament of matrimony. matrimony. May they rediscover each day the grace they have received. In a small domestic churches, may they know how to witness to your presence and to the love with which Christ loves the church. We pray to you for all families faced with difficulty and suffering caused by illness or circumstances of which only you know. Sustain them and make them aware of the path to holiness upon which you call them so that they might experience your infinite mercy and find new ways to grow in love. We pray to you for children and young people. May they encounter you and respond joyfully to the vocation you have in mind for them. We pray for parents and grandparents. May they be aware that they are signs of the fatherhood and motherhood of God in caring for the children who in body and spirit you entrust to them for the experience of fraternity that the family can give to the world. Lord, grant that each family might live with their specific vocation to holiness in the church as a call to become missionary disciples in the service of life and peace and communion with our priests, religious and all vocations in the church. Bless the world meeting of families. Amen. Please all stand. Let us pray. 
May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Before I give the final blessing, maraming salamat po sa pagdalaw ninyo sa Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag at lalong higit sa pakikisa po ninyo sa banal na misa. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God always keep every adversity far from you and in His kindness pour out upon you the gifts of His blessing. Amen. May God keep your hearts attentive to His words that they may be filled with everlasting gladness. Amen. And so may you always understand what is good and right and be found ever hastening along in the path of God's commands made co-heirs with the citizens of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Let us now pray po. Pagdasal na po natin yung mga may sakit na andi dito sa loob ng simbahan, nasa bahay, o mga nasa ospital. We pray for them. And this is followed by the prayer for the blessing po ng inyong religious articles. Pagkatapos po ng prayer, kami na po ang iikot to bless you. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. For your religious articles, we bless them. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may your religious articles be blessed and made holy. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.